Agreed to. Members, we move to Members Order of the Day number two. Reserve Bank of New Zealand amending primary function of the bank. Amendment Bill number two, the <coughs> first reading. Uh, right Honourable Winston Peters. Uh, Mr Speaker, I move that the Reserve Bank of New Zealand amending primary function of bank. Amendment Bill number two be now read at first time and I nominate the Finance and Expenditure Committee to consider the bill. Uh, is the member going to speak? I most certainly am. I'm just making sure that you've got the, the uh, time to write down my proposal. Mr Speaker, this, this is a critical piece of legislation. Indeed, no other single economic policy initiative could deliver so much in terms of benefits to the New Zealand economy. And in fact, there is no important, more important piece of legislation that would benefit the rank and file provincial voters that hitherto have been voting for the National Party, which will surely wipe their, sm their smile off their face tonight. The intention of the bill is clear and compelling. The bill is to give the Reserve Bank the flexibility it needs to promote growth, exports, employment, as well as price stability. The reasons why an amended act is urgently needed are straightforward. As we predicted, the NZ dollars now nudging upwards way above again 80 cents US and New Zealand is not paying its way. And no amount of flim-flam written by the National Party's research unit and given out every Wednesday afternoon for them to repeat will alter these fundamental facts. In 2013, the fundamental economic problem we face is a deep current account deficit. For the year ended June 2013, the current account deficit totaled $9 billion, or equivalent to 4.3% of GDP. As at 30 June 2013, New Zealand's international liability position was, and listen to this, 151.3 billion. That's a whopping 71.1% of GDP. Those figures used to frighten the pigs of Europe. They should be frightening us. As a nation, we are simply not, and by pigs I mean Portugal, Italy, <laughs> Greece and Spain. As a nation, we are simply not a if we are not earning enough and not saving enough. Instead, we're getting deeper and deeper into debt and again resorting to sell assets to foreigners because of a persistent current account deficit. And we are persistently pursuing policies that will not work. And shortly is there's a bill coming up after this bill which seeks to change industrial legislation in this country. And my message to all those exporters out there in New Zealand tonight watching tonight's speech, because they will be watching it, to see whether some glimmer of hope of getting the National Party's backbenchers members bill up. But if they're watching this speech, they will know if they're a farmer, and a dairy farmer at that, that they're possibly losing $125,000 to $130,000 a year because of a massively overvalued dollar. And my message to those people on Export New Zealand is, when will they ever learn that the very people that they are voting for and giving praise to are their worst economic enemies. There was a time that the National Party would never contemplate this. The time of ha Hamilton and Holland and Holyoke and Marshall and people like that, they would never contemplate these sorts of measures. That is, playing up to the financial markets of downtown Queen Street and the bankers and internationalists and forgetting the people who generate the real wealth of this country. So tonight's speech is to them as well, for it's time for them to wake up. The main factor underlying the current account deficit is a grossly overvalued dollar. And we are getting deeper and deeper into debt and again resorting to selling assets to foreigners as some sort of panacea for our problems because of a persistent current account deficit. It's causing serious and deep harm to our export base. Many exporters are going out of business because they cannot compete internationally. Look at the rural towns around New Zealand. And now the small rural cities, the virtual cities, and see how many shops are closed and how much there's a lack of action. And they say in this house, oh, but we got growth. Well, we had growth for 100 years. But the question is, what's the quality of the growth? And what is happening to those people who could save this country? Now, within recent weeks, we've seen the closure of Shannon Pellmungery and Aurora Sawmill with large job losses. More and more closures all the time. Virtually every week a business goes under 
because of a chronically overvalued dollar. Just recently, Independent Fisheries, IFL, confirmed it will close its Christchurch, Christchurch processing plant, resulting in 200 job losses. This is a colossal loss. No, what does the government do? It prefers overseas fishermen to catch New Zealand fish, take it off overseas and can it, and sell it in New Zealand supermarkets, and they call this sound economics. It's a tragedy, an absolute tragedy, that a former national party that used to believe in great conservative principles would never have contemplated. But this crowd today are just obsessed with one thing, power at all costs. And whoever gets the money to finance their campaign, they're on that person's side. And it's high time provincial export New Zealand simply woke up to where their real friends lie in this parliament. A sensible, rational, authentic exchange rate. And I say authentic ex exchange rate because everybody says that the current exchange rate is too high. That, but they won't do a thing about it in this government. An authentic exchange rate would have given those businesses a real chance of survival. And the result of an overvalued dollar is persistent economic malaise characterised by low growth and high unemployment. Therefore, the primary objective of the Reserve Bank bill that we have and the Reserve Bank bill that we propose and the Reserve Bank operations that we support should be to put in place policy decisions that will increase export earnings and improve our international competitiveness. Give us a chance to go back up the world's competitive record list and not head down the bottom where we have constantly going, particularly under the National Party. The flow on impact will be more jobs and more productive economy. We'll give the Reserve Bank the responsibility to frame its monetary policy settings so that the Zealand dollar can be restored to a competitive level. Now, the government says nothing can be done. You know, that's just utter humbug, and all sorts of economists will tell you that. And I just read a recent commentary out of Australia about their problems with the high dollar as well. And this commentator said, the high dollar cannot last forever, but there is a limit to how long companies can go on losing money while waiting for the dollar to fall. We are allowing a temporary overvaluation to shut down economic capacity permanently. They'll shut down and never open up again. This is not how the successful Asian economies operate, unquote. And boy, how much that man is right. That's not how the successful Asian economies operate. We need to ensure that the government does something, stops arguing it can't do a thing. It's all in the lap of the powerful markets, they say. So it has its head firmly stuck in the stand. We've got money called international commodity, Europe, Japan, UK, United States, under 1% home, home mortgage rates. What are you paying? Sorry, what are your colleagues paying? What are the constituents paying? Well, they're paying 5.5 and going upwards at, as I speak. So it's an international commodity. Why are we not being charged international prices? Mr. Speaker, this is a very, very... How many moments ago? Two. Excellent. Even in this short time, I should be able to get some sense through to certain members over there, particularly the one that competed in O'Haria last time and pulled all the, hoard all the hoardings down. Unbelievable, actually. I can't believe these people are in the House. The economic consequences of an overvalued exchange rate are being felt by business throughout New Zealand. Export businesses lose markets and profitability. Employees pay with their jobs, which is why trade unions like the EPMU and exporter groups like NZ Manufacturing and Export Association are supporting amending this act. But all I'm asking the National Party over there tonight is, what's wrong with letting it go to a select committee? What's wrong with letting it go to a select committee and let the exporters and, dare I say it, the Federated Farmers have an epiphany for a change and come along and support what helps their members. What's wrong with having a debate before the select committee rather than just shutting things all down so that no light of day occurs in this case? And one last message to the National Party is this. A number of you are on your way out of Parliament. And when you're out, on that night when you feel dismal and miserable because you thought you might be able to stay, now, now Mr. Hudson, Mr. Hudson knows that the game's up. He's jumping out of the ship. He's swimming to shore right now. He's a smart man, Mr. Hudson. He should be the Minister of Health. He was the only qualified guy there to be. But no, no, they gave it to somebody who's a bank teller. So I'm saying to the rest of them that there's a day coming, a day of reckoning, and it's very soon. 
When that night happens that you've lost and you know you shouldn't have, think back to nights like this when you ignored common sense and fairness and transparency. But don't ever say that a former National Party person who's been around a long time than you and knows a bit about the game didn't try to enlighten you and warn you of your terrible fate because of your ignorance and stubbornness and taciturn non-political brains. Thank you. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Mr Speaker. Uh, Paul Goldsmith. Thank you, Mr.